Hello and welcome to our continued coverage of the Union Budget 2020. Let's get more market perspective. Joining me right now is Nirmal Jain, the Group Chairman at IIFL. Nirmal, thanks very much for taking out the time and speaking with us on this very important day. I want to begin by asking you, what, was, what were the key takeaways for you in this budget? And do you think there were any prominent misses? So, okay, market basically may be expected uh, uh, that there will be some... some uh, exemption for LTCG will come back, so that has not happened. Uh, something more concrete for uh, banks, uh, so that also has been a bit of a disappointment. And also for insurance companies, when you're taking away these exemptions and deductions, that might impact. Uh, so from a longer term point of view, it's a good idea to make income tax simple and without deductions, exemptions. But then the rate should have been lowered much more. It should have been more dramatic like what they did for the corporate taxes. Uh, but is gradual and so therefore uh, the benefit is muted and at the same time if you are to do LIC IPO uh, then the biggest incentive which has been driving uh, flow of savings into life insurance uh, investments uh, should not have been taken away. Uh, also allowing you to have uh, you know, the income tax with exemptions or this uh, these are little things which complicate. Uh, but on the positive side, there are a few things like you know removing criminal uh, clauses in Companies Act and many other acts, and that Vivas Seviswas, which is trying to do a trust-based thing. I think uh, they have good positive moves. A lot more can be done there. Uh, also, government has kept its focus on rural, agriculture, infrastructure, and still uh, really not gone overboard in terms of fiscal deficit. Uh, they try to keep it within the FRBM leeway provided. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's a balanced walk uh, given the circumstances. Maybe the market economy, because there have been so much media talk about economy slowing down and government being very sensitive about it. Uh, people thought a lot more will be done to kickstart the economy. Uh, so, there's very little for the private sector investment. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, the, while the dividend distribution tax is taken away, which helps foreign investors, but the domestic promoters and entrepreneurs get penalized on. Uh, their profits twice because they pay tax as a company and then again it gets taxed as dividend which in a way is a retrograde step because uh, profits should be taxed once you, know, you can have a higher tax rate or a lower tax rate that is uh, uh, no, th that is acceptable uh, but what is happening is these are entrepreneurs and promoters who reinvest and uh, drive jobs uh, so for them uh, uh, you know this really won't be an encouraging thing on the whole, I think it's a mixed bag, primarily because expectations were too many. Few things have been done, few things have not been done. Uh, but it's not, uh, uh, I mean, I'm, of course, market has reacted today a little bit more because foreign investors would not be there today in the market. But I'm not you know, so pessimistic. I think under the circumstances, it's a balanced budget. All right, uh, we'll wait and watch as to what happens on Monday then. But, uh, you know, you were talking about a few misses, and I really want to pull out uh, real estate as a miss and infrastructure and, and, and what is the possibility of uh, a further uh, detrimental reaction as we kick start next week. Also the fact that now with the income tax, uh, you know, getting uh, exempted, all of those sections getting exempted, the interest deduction that you got on your, uh, your housing loan, that goes away as well. So that is an added negative for the real estate space. Yes, and in fact, uh, while affordable housing and housing for all by 2022, they are the stated uh, mission statement of the government. Unfortunately, uh, the tax exemption on the interest paid on housing loan is taken away. And that may not be good for first time millennial or new buyers of homes, particularly when interest rates are high. So I think there are a few steps that might, you know, uh, sort of work, uh, you know, counter to what government objectives are. Uh, so flow of savings into insurance or uh, home loan for you know, new buyers. Uh, so these steps, I don't know, during the course on course of discussion in the budget, few of them may be addressed too. Uh, but uh, in the, in the, you know, at least in the short term, uh, this may not augur well for uh, things like investment in affordable housing by the end user, of, by the home buyer, or uh, uh, also the savings flow into uh, financial sectors which are more productive. 
All right, let's talk about NBFCs and, uh, you know, uh, the liquidity to the NBFC sector and the addressal of that. I mean, a few points were spoken about, including extension of partial guarantee, but, uh, you know, a lot left to be desired. For NBFC, there are some announcements that partial credit guarantee scheme may be extended to bonds also. Uh, if done properly, then this can be a very big booster for uh, liquidity. Uh, but we have to look at the fine print to understand how many NBFCs can really benefit from that. Uh, sorry, what was this? And the real estate sector, of course, uh, uh, I think has been uh, reeling under tremendous pressure because uh, of number of regions, including liquidity, uh, the slowdown in end user demand. But all things put together, uh, uh, yeah, these, there's been a bit of disappointment from real estate point of view and from the housing sector point of view. And the tax exemption on the interest uh, on the housing loan being taken away uh, will also impact. Your comment on uh, you know the RBI dividend component and also now that the RBI policy takes uh, center stage post the budget? Uh, so that we don't have the numbers, so it's very difficult to comment on that. But it's RBI is owned by government, so if they're profit surplus, uh, they can keep whatever they need from a stability point of view. But uh, I mean, it's a policy decision, so I don't have much any comment on that. Okay. One last question, uh, Nirmal, is uh, you know what lies ahead for the equity markets now that we push budget aside? We've seen the reaction, and we don't know how long this can get. Uh, the reaction can prolong itself. But uh, you know, uh, stepping aside from the budget, what's there for the equity markets going ahead? So market. I think, uh, yeah, so you are right that budgets over the years have become uh, relatively less important. We have seen that like corporate tax cut, which is such a big uh, step that came out of the budget. So I think market will look at uh, how coronavirus, uh, uh, you know, impacts or uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, gets resolved. Uh, so and also the global factors, I think they will become, they will weigh a lot more in the market. Uh, and also... Uh, how the economy revives uh, over a period of time in the next few months, few quarters. So these factors, uh, they will become more important. All right. Uh, we'll watch out for them, Nirmal. Thank you so very much for joining us on this special coverage.